If you're looking for the next big opportunity in the market, you are in luck. We've got a guest fast pitch lineup for you. Courtney Dominguez of Paying Capital Management is here to lay out her best idea. Welcome to you, Courtney. And you're pitching Freeport McMoran. And this is an interesting one given the run in the stock and uh, copper prices at record highs already. So what's the catalyst here that propels this higher? Yes. Yeah, I really think there's some great opportunities here with Freeport McMoran, considering it is one of your direct beneficiaries with copper price increases, which, as you mentioned, did just hit some all new highs. But it is expected that copper can get as high as six dollars a pound by the end of the year. And they have mines on three different continents right now. And it's really one of your most direct investments to copper through the S&P 500. And those supply and demand constraints right now are only expected to likely get worse. So supply is at one of its worst constraints we've seen, but demand is only expected to increase. And add on top of that, the fact that clean energy demand for copper is expected to increase fivefold this decade. And there can very well be some significant supply shortages in copper here um, in the mid 2020s, which is only going to increase copper prices further and therefore benefit Freeport. But lastly, clean energy is actually a pretty good play here using Freeport. And that being said, copper um, copper is actually a really good, efficient source of transmitting energy for both wind and solar. And add on top of that, electric vehicles use about four times as much copper as does a traditional combustion engine. So for all of those reasons, I think the copper um, wave is only going to continue, and that's very much going to be a beneficiary of Freeport here. And take a look at the one-year chart here. You'll well notice, to your point, it is trading actually close to its 52-week highs. But I wouldn't discount that because it is still trading at a discount compared to the S&P 500. And the free cash flows are actually pretty healthy right now. What is the lever that you're most concerned about? You mentioned all these different sort of the, the end users of copper. If any one of those end users soften in the market, let's say the housing market softens or the market for EVs yep. soften, what, which ones are you most concerned about? It's something to keep our eye on. Yeah, demand for copper isn't as much as we're expecting. That is one of the risks here. And actually, I think China is really where you want to take a look at because they're actually 50% of the global demand for copper, believe it or not. So I don't think it's necessarily a major concern, but that is, if you're looking for something, something to be watching for. Courtney, so uh, I'm curious, when you look at the balance sheet, is that something that you're looking at and just saying, wow, it's just too cheap because where it's trading on a PE level, as well as you look at the free cash flow and everything else, is that intriguing still for you at this level? It is. Yeah, I mean, they actually didn't even have free cash flow last year, but you're actually seeing now they do have free cash flow again this year. And they are trading. You look at their uh, forward PEs, it actually is cheaper than the rest of the S&P 500. So I think you got to look at some of those fundamentals, and it is a good value here still. Just curious, Courtney, do you like um, a lot of the other, uh, you know, resource stocks? Or is Freeport Mac Moran, is that a standout? Uh, very much. I mean, I think inflation, which I know we've already talked about on this show, is very much kind of here to stay. And I do think it's something we definitely need as a hedge in our portfolio. So looking at materials in general, it's a really good opportunity to have a piece of that and be able to make sure that you can take advantage of inflation kicking in. Freeport is a really good example of that. It's not the only one that I'm looking at by any means. All right. It's time to vote. So are you buying Courtney's pitch on Freeport Mac Moran? Guy Dami, kick things off with your vote. Mel, Mel, are you able to read my smart board for me, please? Can you do that? Let me see. It says, <laughs> preaching down arrow choir. Preaching to the choir, right. perhaps? She's preaching to the choir. That's exactly. No, it's not perhaps. That's spot on, by the way. Well done, Courtney. Despite the move, I think it trades up to the 08 high, which I believe, and Tim can fill me in, $58 or thereabouts. We'll go to Tim. Tim, what's your vote? He's right. Uh, I'm also a buyer. Mel, I don't know if you can read my smart board, but it says FCX equals FCF. That means, look, Freeport is a cash flow machine. Uh, and if you look at the copper strip where it is, you don't even need copper prices to go significantly higher. On next year's multiple, it trades at about four times. At its peak at $58, it traded around seven times EV EBITDA. So I, I think there is more to go uh, because I don't see what changes the fundamental story for copper, supply, demand, dynamics, and, and uh uh, yeah, like I, I've liked this story for a long time. I continue to like it. Pete, you actually mentioned uh, FCF in the FCX discussion as well. <laughs> <laughs> I did, Mel. I tell you what, uh, Courtney, I thought she did an absolutely an outstanding job. She had me at hello. In other words, she had me at FCX because this is a name that I've had a nice run in, and I feel like I've, I've got seller's remorse, Mel. I actually have been in this name since November. I got out of it last Friday. I want to get back into it already, so I likely will be into it maybe as early as tomorrow. All right, Karen, you're going to round it out. What's your vote? Uh, 
I'm going to pass. I, I mean, I learned something new, which is great, about how much copper goes into <laughs> EV, which I always like learning something new. However, when I look at the forward curve, I feel like the copper uh, frenzy, maybe it's not a frenzy, will maybe abate. <laughs> and even if the free cash flow is there, the sentiment around the stock as copper prices mm. go down will go down. So I'm going to let that, that ball pass. It might be a strike, might be a ball, Passes. I'm not sure, but uh, good pitch. But I'm going to pass. And kudos to my three counterparts for all being long now or in the past. All I right. never was. Well, three out of four traders ain't bad, Courtney. Our thanks to you, Courtney Dominguez mm -hmm. of Payne Capital. But the key here is whether or not you out there watching the show are buying Courtney's pitch on Freeport McMoran. You can vote in our Twitter poll at CNBC Fast Money. We'll have the results later on in the show.